Today, we are making rope coil baskets. Some assembly required. Hi, how are you? I am awesome because it's Maker Crate Day! I don't know why I'm so excited for them. I'm only like three to two on success versus absolute failure. But it's still really cool because you get to learn all kinds of different stuff that you never, ever would have tried ever, ever. So today is rope coil baskets, which I've never done. Have you done rope no. coil baskets? I knew that. So here is the pretty- Beginning thing. Pretty beginning thing. And then here's the little book. It's a book of inspiration and, and history and whatnot. So the kit comes with- A wooden base. Two wooden bases, basket rope. Basically it's like a thick clothesline sized rope. And I am gonna be using this. It's braided t-shirt yarn because what they recommend is you have to have one long continuous coil. Since this kit is not really made for two people to be doing it simultaneously. But that's what we're going to be doing. That is, however, what we're going to be doing. So we have a, a different sort of rope. You could also, you know, if you don't have this kit and you want to do this project, you could substitute braided t-shirt yarn. You could get, I'm sure, just like fat rope at the store. Clothesline sized. I can't tell you exactly how thick that is. Eight millimeters. So we also have uh, little needles with big eyes. Uh-oh. You know what I don't like? When you need scissors to get out your scissors. That annoys me. So there's some awesome scissors that I'm going to have to somehow uh, destroy this box to get out. And they're calling this twine. To me, twine is big and thick and, you know, generally contains big chunks of hay because, you know. Bailing twine. That's the twine that I'm used to. This is sort of a smooth thread, but we'll call it twine. Anyway, so we've got white, blue, ish, goldish, blue. it's a navy blue, a red, sort of a raspberry, and a weird gray blue. You could use like a crochet thread or embroidery floss if you don't have this kit. So let's clean this up and get organized. I will attempt to break out these scissors. These scissors are really cool. I can't They're wait like... to show them to you. But I can't. Tiny shirt. They're stuck. To start this project, cut a piece of the twine about as long as your arm. Tie just a regular old knot in the end and thread your needle. Now stick your needle through the rope around an inch from the end. It doesn't matter if you stick it too far down, you can always trim it later. Now you wrap the twine around the rope. I'm going for about a half an inch, maybe a little bit more. This is to keep the rope from fraying. So you're gonna tie a really good knot at the end. Make sure you slip your needle under some of the rope and some of the twine, make a good knot. Cut off any extra twine hanging off the end of your knot. You can also cut off any extra rope that you didn't cover with the twine. All right, now make sure you tie a new knot at the end of your twine and you can start wrapping the rope all the way around your red wrapped section. Now, starting at the bottom, although I don't think it necessarily matters, you're gonna push your needle through all three layers of the rope. So you'll have the loose rope, the one that you'd keep wrapping with on the top left. But again, I don't think that it really matters. It's just the way that I'm doing it. And so on this step is where the pliers really come in handy because it is super hard to pull the needle through all of this rope. Now you turn a quarter turn and then sew from the bottom to the top again, and then tighten it all up. So now you should have two good stitches across your base. Now it's time to start the pattern of stitching. So the first stitch goes from the outside around through the very edge of the first rope in. 
Just grab the very edge of the rope. You don't need to go through the middle. Now push your needle all the way through, pull the thread tight, and do the same thing again, but on the second rope in. So you're wrapping the twine all the way around from the back and grabbing just a little bit of the edge of the rope and pulling all the way through. And that's it. You just repeat that pattern for the whole rest of the basket. Now my twine is getting short, so I need to tie a knot. I've decided that I like to do this on the one stitch. So you just snag a little bit of the rope on that first rope in with your needle. Sew through the same place again to make a little loop and stick your needle through the loop and pull it tight. There's your knot. Just snip the extra thread. So after you thread your needle again with new thread, you stitch from where you tied your last knot through to the back. And then you keep going just like before. Now you're coming onto the stitch in the second rope in, and then keep going with the pattern. Now this seems like a fine place to start bringing the sides up. So just place the rope at a little bit more of an angle on, on top of the other rope, and then keep on sewing. If you wanted to have straight sides, you can put the, this layer of rope right on top of the rope on the last layer. And keep the same pattern up, two and one and two and one, and soon you'll see the sides forming. Finally, I think that my basket is big enough to finish. I'll show you one way how to do that. This method gives you a little loop handle, which I think is super cute. So first I'll tie the same kind of knot as before, hidden under the top rope. This will just keep everything nice and tight. I don't want anything to unravel. Now you figure out how big you want your handle and then loop it so you can measure. Cut the rope a little bit longer because you can always cut it off later. Loop the rope over and sew through both layers of the loop. You're gonna start from you know where your thread is close to the basket. So you wrap around both ropes and start at the end closest to the basket and go out. Now tie a knot in the end of the wrap, make sure you sew through everything and then sew it securely to the basket. And you can hide that stitch again inside the basket. Okay, so one thing that I forgot a second ago is that they recommend using pliers to help pull the needle through just when you're starting because you have to go all the way through a couple a couple pieces at the bottom. We'll show that in a second. Hopefully, if we make it that far, we should, right? Yes. <laughs> so the, um, the first project that you do in this kit is basically a test. <laughs> so, you know, it's where you figure out how to make the pattern and how this whole situation works. We'll try to make all of our mistakes in this first one so that any other ones that we do are better. Mm -hmm. So, Lily was having trouble with that other rope, I guess yeah, you want to call it. Did you tie it on in this? You yes, did. I did. Well done. Um, yeah, because it was thick. being a huge jerk. So, we said, okay, let's put that one on hold. We'll ignore that for now. I have I have an idea. I think that I could make a cool basket out of it. But I also have, uh, if you have been watching this channel, you saw my bright yellow vintage macrame cord. And that is what I have right here. That is very easy to sew through. So I'm just going to restart this one and ooh, for you. And then we'll both be on our way. I have this much. I think you should do your basket straight up instead of like. Okay. 
And you can put like pencils in it or something. Oh, that's an idea. So the next step, of course, is to go up because otherwise it's just, you know, a pot holder. Is that what you call that? That's not what you call that, is it? That's what you call that. Like a trivet. A disc. A, a flat thing. Which is fine. They make very nice flat things. If it was a little bit bigger, it could probably have a glass on it. This one, it's a bit small. So you can either go up gradually, like a sort of an angle. Or straight up. Or you could go straight up. You could go out and then in and then out. I'm not sure that I'm there yet. I'll go straight up and then maybe I will also try to make a lid. So I believe that the secret for going straight up is to just put your rope on top of your other rope instead of next to the rope. I will let you know if it's not that easy. I could make it I'm cute. sure we'll find out. You could make it cute. <laughs> that would be cute, actually. You could make, like, for your stuffed animals, like a tiny little basket. They couldn't put anything in it, though. No. Probably a little bit bigger would be good. It could be like a tooth fairy box, though, if you wanted to put one little tooth in. <laughs> the possibilities are just endless if you have all kinds of a weird imagination, like we do. Okay, I am satisfied with the height of my tiny, tiny basket. So I started it going up here, you can't really see, but so this is like where my first row went on top of the base. So I'm going to end it above that because that is what they recommend for making it kind of flat on the top. So I'm going to wrap just like we did at the beginning and then cut it off, sew it down. Impressed with how uh, straight up and down the sides are. I was not expecting that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to try to make a lid. So what they recommended in the instructions is to make kind of a knot. So that will be like the little handle, and then this part will kind of attached to the lid. Oh, that seems a bit excessive in height, <laughs> if you will. Let's try to make it a little shorter. Then you're supposed to cut off the bottom and then start your little lid around that. So let's see if I can do it. I believe in you. Thank you. Make little handles. That is very cute. So pretty much if you want to make handles you just have to go around it here and then make a loop and then go around it here and then like stab through it. Mm. I'm pretty sure this is not a hundred percent the way that they want you to make the lid. I actually tried to minimize the knot underneath but I didn't. It's still all there. <laughs> I think that it turned out pretty well. I have a lot more ideas, so I'm going to definitely make a couple more, and then we'll see what we have. So here we have our three baskets that we finished for this round. I think that I'm going to make this a two-part video because I really do want to try the baskets with the wooden base, but my fingers hurt and this video should really only be so long. <laughs> but these baskets are what we have so far. I, th I did manage to make something out of the braided t-shirt yarn. This is not for beginners. I would maybe not start with this. <laughs> I needed like a skinny needle and I could only do it with, it's not the most beautiful thing, but I believe it may be functional. You wouldn't want to put no. anything in it that would snag on your tiny like threads. It. I appreciate that. I like it because I did it and it's done. <laughs> maybe you could 
toss in a little sunscreen and your phone and your sunglasses, take it to the beach, I don't know. For this one, maybe you could put your little jewelry or maybe your coins, if you're one of those people that carries coins around in your pocket. If you're one of those people that has pockets on a day-to-day, -day, I don't have pockets usually, um, but you could do that. And in this one, you could store your M&Ms. M&Ms? Mm. <laughs> but that's pretty cool. So we know that we can use different kinds of rope. Certain ropes are preferable. Both of these ropes actually ended up being pretty easy to sew through. You should definitely store them in those. <laughs> definitely. I mean, you have to have somewhere to store them, right? We should store that with M&Ms. <laughs> that would be a lot of M&Ms. Mm -hmm. I am pleased with how these came out. I, this was actually really fun. This was more work than fun, but it turned, it turned out, out very good. You know, sometimes you work really hard on things and they still look kind of crappy at the end. But this one is fine. And then this one is a little cute. That one is adorable. And this one I really like, the little lid. But I recommend that you try this. Um, stay tuned for, it won't be the next video because I'm going to give my fingers a few days to not sew. Could this one? They were, they were fine after this one. This one took a lot of finger strength. Um, not the next video, but the video after, I will be doing the bases and I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, so stay tuned. We will, we will be doing the bases. So uh, we'll see you for that one. The next video is going to be cool as well. If you're not subscribed yet, this would be a great time to do that and hit your notification button so that you don't miss these next two videos. And really, let's be honest, the other videos will probably be cool too. They all end up being pretty interesting. We like to keep ourselves amused. New videos come out on Tuesdays and Saturdays if you want to keep your eyes peeled for those. And until then, we will be here crafting. Bye. See you next time.